Hello, hello, and welcome to the Experience Lab and this week's Joy Birth. I'm Sonia Rhodes, founder and CEO, and I'm joined here by our amazing team of Experience Catalysts to share our positive energy and gratitude for all that you and your teams are doing and to provide just a brief respite in these busy and challenging days. The Experience Lab is an incubator of ideas and an accelerator for action, an experience design firm dedicated to transforming the healthcare experience using the lens of humanity as our guide. We partner with visionary healthcare systems in the exploration and design of a more human healthcare experience. And together we are leading, looking, living and loving our way to a new future for healthcare. One thing we hear over and over is that everyone, everyone in healthcare is looking for a little respite, a little tranquility, joy and goodness in our days. And that's what these joy bursts are all about. A few moments, to focus on the good and shift our energy and our mindset. We've had joy bursts filled with music and mindfulness and movement and even laughter. And today we will put on our rose colored glasses. Mine are just the old lady reading glasses. Um, and the rose colored glasses are one of the Experience Lab's favorite looking lenses. And together we will look for and find the good all around us. One of my favorite musicians, I like to call him my boyfriend, is Jason Mraz, who seems to be the soundtrack of goodness in the world. And I don't know if you've heard his new um, piece of music. We had a little bit of it playing there at the top of this joy burst. It's called Looking for the Good. And it's this beautiful anthem for our joy burst today. And just one little line in that, in the song, reminds us to look for the good. And Jason Mraz says, look for the good and life would be better if everybody would. And so today we all get to look for the good with one of the most amazing guides for goodness. Um, our joy burst expert today is exactly who we need to look for and celebrate the good. Brandon Harvey is someone that we in the Experience Lab have celebrated and perhaps stalked a little bit. He's a storyteller focused on the good in the world. He's the founder of Good, Good, Good and the creator of The Good Newspaper, a printed newspaper full of good news. And he's the host of the podcast Sounds Good and has built this extraordinary online community of more than 250,000 world changers and our team definitely part of that group. We're thrilled to welcome Brandon as he shares some good, good, good news. Welcome, Brandon. Oh my goodness, thank you so much for having me. Also, my dog Pop-Tart is here. She wanted to make an appearance. So I'm Brandon. This is a picture of me uh, as I am right now. Uh, and then here's a picture of me uh, with back when I had hair. So I used to have this ridiculous hair. This is a picture of me in Peru. And uh, my old job was as a humanitarian photographer. I got to spend years traveling around the world helping nonprofits tell stories of the amazing solutions they were creating to problems. And I would always leave these trips feeling so hopeful, so energized by the stories of impact that, uh, that, that these communities were having and just the stories of people working together to um, make a difference in the lives of their neighbors, their communities. But I'd come home, I'd turn on the news and I would see a heartbreaking news story that acknowledged the very real problem that I had just experienced, but didn't go far enough into saying, and here's the solution, here's the good news. The stories were getting cut off. And so uh, I knew that I had to figure out a way to help people see these solutions that I was getting to see. And so the first thing I did was I started to kind of look into some of the neuroscience uh, on why bad news seems to just stick around a lot better. And this amazing uh, neuropsychologist, Dr. Rick Hansen, he talks about this idea that our brains have an internal negativity bias and bad news sticks to our brains like Velcro and good news slides right off our brains like Teflon. And I was like, well, we got to figure out how to trick our brains into overcoming this. And so, uh, you know, knowing nothing except for the world of art and the world of storytelling, I was like, what's the weirdest way that I could possibly tell these stories in a way that would maybe, you know, grab a little bit more attention, be a little bit more like Velcro for good news. And so I'm like, well, you know, it's the year 2017. Uh, 
why not create a good newspaper, you know, in a, in a digital era where everybody's doing digital stuff, let's go old school. And so we, you know, we, we, we call a bunch of, you know, 70 year olds who are working printing presses around the country. We, we learn how to make a print newspaper. We've launched it on Kickstarter and, uh, and the good newspaper is born. And, uh, we've since, since reached, hundreds of thousands of people with good news and, and more than just making people feel good. We helped people. Our, our goal has always been to catalyze people to take action. And it's been beautiful getting to see that happen. And so in the last three years, we've, we've seen every single good news story under the sun and uh, seeing people respond to every single bad news story that we've all encountered. And there's this quote. Well, actually, first, let me just say that there's good in the world. There's a lot of it. And all we have to do is take a moment to celebrate it, absorb it, and share it. And so uh, there's this quote that's kind of the core of everything we do. It's from Mr. Rogers. I'm sure you've heard it. He said, when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. And so first and foremost, I just want to say to everybody who's tuning in right now, you are the helpers that we're talking about. We're all at home. We're watching the news. And when we look closely, it's so easy to see you as a helper. And so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We've been just celebrating your work for months now. We're just so grateful. Um, I also imagine that maybe it feels like the weight of the world is on your shoulders right now. Maybe things maybe feel a little bit overwhelming, like the whole system relies on you. The only good that can happen is from you and your colleagues. And, and again, I'm, I'm so grateful for your work, but I, I want to offer today as an encouragement that there is so much good in the world. And, and, and as you're showing up and doing important, beautiful work, there are others who are responding in their own ways and they have been. And, and so today, I, what I want to do is I want to celebrate some good news. We're going to roll through just... 25 of the best good news stories we've been seeing from around the world right now. People creating solutions. We call it real good news, not just feel good news, because it's just, it's not just stuff that makes you happy, but it's stuff that makes you hopeful. It's people responding to real problems. You know, it's not the absence of bad news. It's the response to bad news. So we're going to roll through those. None of them are COVID related, and they're all just celebrations of other people doing good. And so if you're tuning in right now or as you're tuning in right now, uh, you can do one of two things. I encourage you to either just close your eyes and absorb these so that you can just feel them deeply, allow it to stick like a Velcro, or pull out a notebook or the notes app on your phone and write down one or two of these that are your favorites. Both of these will help you absorb that good news so it competes with bad news in your brain. I want to start off with these three good news stories from the good newspaper. Um, Deaths from airplane crashes in the 21st century continue to become more and more rare as we make planes safer and safer. The price of solar energy continues to drop lower and lower as we create more innovations around that. And the percent of children who are malnourished has just dropped decade over decade over decade since the 90s. It's incredible. It's all because of people showing up and taking action. Oh my goodness, this is a wild story that I just want to share. A Jimmy John's driver took a fellow veteran to the ER after his sister dialed the wrong number. Long story short, uh, Greg Holman was recovering from a surgery and he calls his sister and says, hey, I need help getting to the hospital. But she's in a different town, so she's like, I'm just going to call Greg's social worker. She gets the number wrong, accidentally calls Jimmy John's, doesn't realize it and says, hey, can you go pick up Greg. And they're like, yeah, no problem. And so they, they, the Jimmy John's driver shows up uh, and he is happy to take Greg to the ER. Basically the whole time doesn't really get that this is the Jimmy John's driver, but a Jimmy John's driver, you know, helps Greg get the care he needs. My dog is like not happy about Jimmy John's driver doing that, but I love it. Um, I, I love that a Jimmy John's driver showed up in that situation and made a difference. Um, TikTok. I don't know if you guys are seeing all the TikTok dances going up, going around right now, uh, but influencers in Canada are using TikTok uh, to inspire Indigenous and non-Indigenous youth to learn more about their cultures, truly using social media for good. Um, Sweden just closed their last coal-fired power station two years ahead 
of schedule. 50 years ago, childhood acute lymphoblastic leukemia was a death sentence, but today 90% of children with the disease are cured. So I don't know if you know this or not, but when George Washington chose to build his Mount Vernon estate along the Potomac River, he declared the then pristine body of water the nation's river. And at the time, dolphins would show up. There were bald eagles everywhere. Um, and unfortunately, in the years since, it became too polluted and the dolphins left. And so for more than 100 years, there haven't been dolphins in this river in the U.S. And thanks to work by conservationists, dolphins are finally living and breeding in the Potomac again, which is wild. I don't know if you've been watching the Netflix series Tiger King, but 39 tigers have been rescued uh, and they're now living in a Colorado animal sanctuary in safety and peace. Oh, this is beautiful. I love this man right here. This is a man named Kevin Briggs. Uh, this is also from the Good Newspaper. and uh, They call him the guardian of the Golden Gate Bridge because for more than 23 years, he worked as a California Highway Patrol officer. And when he would see somebody who was considering taking their lives, he would, he would walk up to them. He'd still stand back and he'd introduce himself and he'd say, hi, I'm Kevin. I'm with the Highway Patrol. Is it all right if I come up and speak with you for a bit. He would get their permission and he'd empower them. And in the course of his career, he talked to more than 200 people standing on the edge of the bridge. And he's since retired and he now works full-time in suicide prevention. What a hero. Uh, scientists just found a bug that feasts on toxic plastic. It's going to be beautiful to imagine the amazing solutions we can create with that now that we've discovered this. You may have seen the news story of the teacher who disarmed and then hugged a student who brought a gun to school and, and, and safely, you know, uh, supported him during a really difficult crisis. Uh, he's going to receive the Citizen Congressional Medal of Honor, which is beautiful. Koalas from uh, Australia's bushfires, who you may have seen heartbreaking photos of them being impacted by the fires. They're, they've been healed, rescued. They are finally getting released back into the wild. Um, this is a beautiful photo. If you're closing your eyes, maybe check it out really quick. This comfort dog, uh, was sworn in, uh, to help victims of sexual assault and violence, literally putting his paw on a Bible, uh, or maybe it's a dog training manual, who knows? Um, and I just love that, that visual. And I think it's so sweet. YouTubers in Silicon Valley rallied together over the last few months to raise $20 million to plant 20 million trees. The sound, this is a sound shirt that lets deaf people feel music using haptic sensors. Um, this green cement company says its product, product can cut carbon dioxide emissions by 70%. This mom has created these beautiful signs that say, don't give up. You are enough. You are not alone for people to put up in their yards. As And she's selling them at cost to create um, more hopeful neighborhoods. Um, this new organization is set out to be the Teach for America for Journalism and has already placed 225 journalists with 160 local news organizations around the country to help them better cover important stories impacting their communities. These two countries in Africa have put an end to two decades of conflict. They signed a peace agreement this year, last year, I think, technically. Uh, and, and, and it's beautiful to see these two countries who were at war for so long ending their war and embracing each other in a hug. The CDC says that teen drinking just reached the lowest point in 25 years. The veteran homelessness rate has decreased by nearly 50% since 2009, thanks to all these incredible efforts being made. <laughs> this is incredible. Over a million gardeners have banded together over the internet to create a global network of greenery that supports and nourishes bees and butterflies, which is beautiful and something that's even able to continue during stay at home orders. Um, and then lastly, I love this story, a North Dakota brewery, they didn't really know what to put on their cans. They didn't necessarily have like a, a graphic designer. And so they're like, well, let's make every single one of our cans just have a photo of a dog up for adoption. And since then, uh, all, you know, so many dogs have been adopted, even more so in the last month, which is really, really beautiful. 
And so I, what I want to do is I want to give you just a little bit of homework really quick. And my hope is it's not homework you dread, it's homework you're excited about. Um, today, on your next break, when you're reaching for your phone, I want you to think back to just one of these good news stories, just one. And before you, you know, check your notifications, take your little break, um, take 15 seconds to close your eyes and think about one of these stories. Think about the creativity of the person who created that solution. Think about the impact it's going to have on people and animals and communities. Think about how it made you feel. At the end of that 15 seconds, you are going to feel more hopeful. The, the, the way that the Velcro and the Teflon situation works will be kind of overridden and it's, it's going to hopefully leave you feeling more hopeful throughout the day. And then if you want extra credit, if you want a little bonus assignment, all you have to do is tell a friend. Tell a friend one of these good news stories. Share it with a colleague because when you teach something, it allows you to absorb it on a deeper level. And together we can feel more hopeful and be reminded that no matter what's happening in the world, there are people stepping up to create solutions. They're joining you in the good work that, we're, that you're doing. And we're all so grateful for the impact you're having. Of course, you can always find more good news stories to meditate on, to absorb deeply on our Instagram and our newspaper uh, and everything else we create. And our goal is just to help our, is to create resources that help you feel less overwhelmed and more capable of doing good in the world. So thank you so much for, again, the work you do. Um, and we're with you in this fight for optimism and hope in doing more good in the world. Thank you. What a gift just to have a few minutes of good news. I know it feels good to me and I hope that that's the energy shift that you all needed today. Once again, I just want to thank Brendan for sharing his goodness every day through Good, Good, Good and the Good Newspaper and today with all of us and uh, to you our mad love, our massive gratitude for everything you and your organizations are doing. We're sending you our positive energy and cheering you on every step of the way. And we hope to see you back here again soon. Have a great afternoon. I think that's the time zone everywhere. Have a great afternoon. <laughs> Thank you.